2024 will be the first presidential election of the campaign of the AI era. And tech giant Meta announced it will start labeling all manipulated media. Our next guest uh, started to study multimedia forensics back 16 years ago. Uh, and at the time uh, when all this was still under the radar, today he leads the multimedia and information security lab at Drexel, where his uh, team spots deep fakes. Joining us right now is Matthew Astam. He's Drexel University professor. Good morning to you. Um, you know, we've all seen the deep fakes, and I'm just curious what you think, not can be done about it, but whether you think even labeling them deep fakes or not real or generated by AI unto itself is going to solve the misinformation problem. Clearly, that won't solve the misinformation problem, uh, though I think it's a very important first step. Uh, it's current generative AI technology makes it really easy to make fake media that's perceptually realistic. And we've seen this in a number of events, in campaign ads, in misinformation events from other countries. Uh, having any measures to help inform the public about this is going to be a good thing. That said, there's probably not going to be a, a fail-safe technological solution. What we really need is a broader social solution, an educated public, uh, excuse me, an educated public, and uh, smart news consumers. Okay, well, with, with apologies, um, you know, those, those are hard to come by. Uh, we have a yes. very educated uh, and very smart consumers who watch this broadcast, but uh, I think there's a lot of troubling uh, information that floats around the country, and uh, there's a lot of folks who, who don't understand the difference or distinction. And by the way, some people who don't want to understand the difference or distinction. And so when you say it's a social, that the solution is social, I'm not sure that you can impose that uh, on a society or be able to, to, to create a solution like that. I agree. And that's why uh, people like me are working on trying to build as many technical tools as we can to help protect against these types of misinformation threats. Um, it's very like I mentioned before, it's very easy to make fake and misleading media, both through generative AI tools or through traditional tools like Photoshop. And your normal person at a quick glance might believe that these things are real. So I think what we need are, again, a continuation right. of development of tools like this, as well as uh, the opportunity to talk to the public through, uh, through programs like this where we can say, hey, when you see a piece of media that doesn't seem quite right, think about it a little bit. Matthew, though, can we just talk about the psychological effects? Because there have now been some studies on folks who see things that are deep fakes and know that they're deep fakes. So people yeah. who they see a deep fake, they know, they demonstrably know it's a deep fake, and yet it actually has an impact on them nonetheless. And so that's the piece of this that I don't understand how you're ever going to get around. So I should say that my expertise is not in the psychological part of this. It's on the technical part. But I agree with you. This is a very challenging problem. Uh, I think an important thing for us to do is, again, to try to develop as many tools as we can to help inform information uh, consumers about what they're looking at, what they're seeing, what they're hearing, uh, so that they can make the most informed decisions about the information they're consuming. But, but that assumes... And that, the reason why I raise the psychological sort of behavioral science stuff around this is that if you're exposed to something that's fake, you know it's fake, and yet it actually still has an impact on you, has an impact on the discussion. It, you know, it sort of, it opens the Overton window to something that you might not have otherwise thought about or, or you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. All of these, all of these things, the labeling that you might do, the technical solutions that you might have, as long as people are exposed to it, it won't change the dynamic. I, again, I'm not an expert in the psychological part of this, and I think it really does open up a broader kind of social, ethical, and legal question that we need to start considering as, as a society. I think really what this stems from is we're seeing the emergence of a new type of information security problem. In the past, when we were looking at problems, we kind of said, I want to stop a bad guy from getting access to information on my computer or overhearing my phone calls. And there, the protection against that is things like cryptography and network security. We know where information comes from. Now we're in an era 
where information is being uh, generated by unknown or untrusted sources. We see it. It may have an effect. It may we may have to make decisions on the basis of it, both from a governmental point of view, a legal point of view, a business point of view. And we need to rethink our models of how we deal with this, both technical, social, legal and ethical.